Hey, what's up guys, Q&A. Uh, still got Brendan in the background. Not sure what he's doing. Actually, he's working on our hybrid audio display um, and getting that all set up over there. We haven't decided what radios we're gonna put in it or not. But anyway, we're gonna answer this question. And this one, I actually, I came across and thought this would actually be, uh, I actually liked the question and then I got me thinking some more, so I'm gonna share my thoughts with you. So anyway. This one is from Jerry from Facebook. And come on, Android phone. That's why I have my iPhone over here. My question is about power cable. I'm doing a big three uh, uh, upgrade and I'm running zero slash one gauge power wire to the rear amps. Um, I understand current and line loss to a degree, but this is where I don't understand. People using zero or four gauge for power at the battery, then putting an inline fuse holder with, that has a diameter of 12 to 16 gauge worth of material for the fuse, then going back zero or four gauge to the rest of the run. It's like a six inch water line going into a one inch valve back to a six. So it got me thinking and then it got me thinking some more. So. From what I understand and from what I've been taught and what I know, obviously the power wire that we need to run is not necessarily like, oh, we just have to go with bigger because bigger is better, but we really have to choose the power wire that we're running either eight gauge, four gauge, zero gauge, two gauge, whatever, et cetera, because of the distance of the run. So this is what got me thinking. So here's your typical current flow chart and I'm kind of reading this upside down, but as I can see here, let's say I'm gonna be drawing 60 amps of current. If it's between zero and 10 feet, it says for 60 amps, I can run a six gauge power wire. If, I need, if I'm gonna go from 15 to 20 feet, I need to go to four gauge power wire for that same 60 amps and so forth. If I go to 25 to 30 feet, I need two gauge and it keeps going and going and going and going down until, you know, uh, I think 100 and, 20 feet or 110 feet. So that got me thinking about the fuse and I got a couple fuses here which I've taken the liberty of destroying to dissect for science. So um, I always knew that fuses weren't created, you know, or should be treated equal because there's different brands and different qualities. So then I took this 300 amp a &L fuse and I decided to smash it and break it open. And of course, then I was thinking about your question and I realized that from what I think, these fuses are really short. So because they're only a few inches long, the trace doesn't need to be the exact same size as the power wire, which is why it can be smaller. And of course it needs to have enough material to be able to pull that much current through. But of course this is also your protection circuit here. So I'd imagine there would be a little bit of loss, but it shouldn't be a substantial amount. But it obviously is really important to have something in place just in case there's a fire or a short so it doesn't burn down your car, etc. So because this is really short, I don't think you need quite the diameter of material equal to the gauge of the wire because the gauge of the wire only needs to be that big because of the length of the cable, as you can see by the chart. But then, like I said, I was looking at the fuses and you know, if you looked at this fuse, you're like, oh cool, there's a big trace in there, but then I dissected it and you can see this big trace, but then you can also see where this rivet cover goes onto it. And that's actually where you would actually find the weak point there in the material. There's hardly any material with that little rivet there. So then I looked at a mini a &L fuse holder and I smashed that one and I looked at it and I can see where the actual cover basically kind of is glued slash melted on there. And you can see in the center there, you've got a much larger piece of material connecting the trace without a big hole um, that's eating up material for that rivet, as you can see. So I would think that this would break really easily with too much current, where this is basically straight through. But because I liked your question so much, I'm actually going to take it one step further. I'm actually going to do a couple follow-up videos. So, so far, in my own opinion, I think, it might be a slight bottleneck, but because the fuse is so short with the right fuse, it's a good quality fuse, I would think that you shouldn't have an issue and then that's okay because it's so small. 
But I want to take it a step further, and which is why I'm going to actually do a couple follow-up videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some CCA wire, which is copper clad aluminum, and I'm also going to take some OFC copper cable, and I'm going to go to the dyno. I'm going to t cut equal lengths, power and ground, hook them up to my batteries, hook them up to an amplifier, and I'm going to run that amplifier and do a test on the dyno and see what kind of power I get out of the amplifier with CCA wire versus OFC wire, but then I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm actually gonna put a fuse holder in line on each one when I do the test to see if I actually get a drop in my output on my amplifier, my RMS power, by just simply adding a fuse. So um, I obviously can't take my multimeter and actually put that in line on power and pass that much current through the multimeter because it's only rated at 10 amps, I'll burn it up and catch it on fire. However, I can use my amp dyno because my amp dyno is gonna read what the amplifier is gonna do. So if that fuse creates a bottleneck or the quality of the cable going to the amplifier creates a bottleneck and it's not receiving or getting the right amount of current, the amplifier is gonna suffer by not putting out a certain amount of power. So as an example, if it's supposed to put out a thousand watts and because I add a fuse holder, all of a sudden I get 950 I know that I had a slight bottleneck, but to me 50 watts at that point is going, hey, I needed it because if something ever shorts, I want that fuse to pop so it doesn't burn my car down. Uh, but then we'll also be able to see at the same time, the bottleneck effect on CCA wire versus oxygen free copper. So I look forward to it. I really liked your question. Hopefully this answers a little bit of it, but I really look forward to actually doing some of the tests to actually really having a more definitive answer so make sure you subscribe. I'm sure most of you are already subscribed, but I know you're probably looking forward to these couple videos as much as I am. So make sure you follow us, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, etc. And we'll hopefully see you really soon with those two videos and let me know what you think. We'll see you soon.